Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, as the red-hot Democratic gubernatorial primary comes to a close, oh, we've had all but one of the Democratic candidates on the program. We're going to get the view from the business community, and then our popular health care update. All of that follows these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Well, I'll tell you, May 20 is a big day. Uh, Fred Anton, he's the CEO of the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association, and Gene Barr, he's CEO of the PA Chamber of, of Business and Industry. This is our business panel. These guys are going to like, I'm asking you guys to come in and critique this governor's election. This ought to be pretty good. You know, represent the business community. It's sort of an opposite point of view than what we've gotten. But, you know, we want balance on this program. We've had the Democratic candidates. Now we're going to hear, I guess, well, from know, the other we side. We are Go political ahead. observers. Yes, I mean, are. Yeah, we've, yeah. <laughs> we've been around a long time and we've seen a lot. That, that is certainly true. All right. Let's start with the... Uh, I want to talk about the, the sort of the political dimensions of this, and I know Fred wants to weigh in on that. Let's start, first of all, on the policy side. Gene, sure. I'll start with you. From the business point of view, what, you have concerns you've expressed about the Democratic primary. Some of the candidates stand on taxes. and but Go ahead. Yeah, we have. And look, a lot of this is understandable. It, you know better than I do that in the Democrat primary, the candidates need to run to the left and then come back, and the opposite's true in the Republican. Having said that, it seems to be that each of them is trying to out-tax the other. Uh, one of the things that disturbs us is this constant drumbeat for more business taxes that you hear continually, some of it to take care of what is alleged to be cuts to basic education. In reality, the cuts to the state side of basic ed happened in the previous administration, and there's a link on the state teachers organization's own website that shows that. There's pushes for higher taxes on Pennsylvania's natural gas industry. There's pushes for a higher minimum wage when, in fact, the Congressional Budget Office has said that'll cost at least half a million up to a million jobs. So, yeah, there's a lot of things in here that we see that are very disturbing. The reality is this drumbeat for fair share of business taxes. Pennsylvania already gets a higher percent of their total revenue than the national average from the corporate income tax side. So it's quite clear from our perspective that there is a fair share being paid. you agree with that assessment? I agree with it totally. All right. All right, Fred, let's, uh, let's now turn to the campaign. I know both of you are, as Fred points out, political observers. Uh, as we get down to the wire, Tom Wolf in the public polls that have been done has a pretty substantial lead. Fred, how do you assess this race? Well, I, is, I think that... Uh, I accept uh, what the polls say, which is that Wolf is substantially ahead, although there are many undecided. I think there are three factors that have not been sufficiently highlighted which will determine the outcome of this race. Turnout is one. The lower the turnout, I think the more likely that one of the established politicians is likely to win. Geography is another. I think that Tom Wolf is from an area where, the dem where generally the center of the state is thought to be and is largely Republican. So there are not that many Democratic voters in the center of the state. While in the southeast, particularly in uh, Philadelphia, there are many, many Democratic voters. And if a reasonable turnout should come out at, for one of the uh, th three southeastern mm -hmm. candidates, and I think it would most likely be Allison Schwartz, uh, that would provide a tremendous boost for her campaign. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is, and this is very controversial, is the ground game. Now, some think that uh, uh, the, that's not going to mean much, but I don't agree with that. I think that if there's one group that can put workers on the on the street during election day, it's the unions. Mm -hmm. because most of whom have endorsed, most of which, to be mm -hmm. grammatically correct, have endorsed McCord, right? Uh, McCord, mm -hmm. but some have endorsed Schwartz. Okay. So, and as a matter of fact, I will say right now, my prediction for the outcome of this race is by the votes, Wolf, 35%. Schwartz, <laughs> this is 30, good. I'm going to write this down. 30%. Uh, McCord, 25%. And McGinty, 
the balance. Now, that's my okay. opinion. How do, you, how do you see this? You know what? <laughs> more and more on a daily basis, we're involved in the policy stuff. But as Fred says, you've got to get involved in the politics because that leads you into the policy. There's so many ways you could cut this. It's really a fascinating race, particularly when you've seen who is in, who has dropped out. There are three people with largely Philadelphia ties in, one with Central PA. Go back to Fred's point, who gets the Pittsburgh vote? Mm -hmm. Certainly Tom Wolf has run a lot of ads there, has made a lot of inroads in that political establishment, so it'll be interesting to see who gets that whole Pittsburgh side. So, you know, at the end, is it going to be the amount of money and the amount of all the resources Tom Wolf has put in? Will it be the ground game, as Fred has said? Will it be the establishment mm -hmm. politicians? Mm -hmm. This is going to be a fascinating yeah. day on primary election. Yeah, I mean, day. I think uh, we're going to run to a break. I, a couple other questions I want to ask you about this, but, I mean, I, th I think they're just as an observer myself, reasonable observations. I mean, higher the turnout, I think you would agree, probably favors Wolf because it gets voters mm -hmm. that aren't connected to the parties and to the unions and probably benefits him in geography and sure. these primaries is always important. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue. We're getting a little side of point of view from the business community on the Democratic gubernatorial primary. We have to ask them about Tom Corbett and how he's going to do. We'll do that in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, uh, Gene Barr and Fred Anton, our business panel are, are here. Are in the, the panel is here, I guess, to get the, <laughs> let's just with this grammar today. <laughs> At any rate, uh, let's talk a little, uh, uh, Fred, I'm going to turn quick, quickly to you. Uh, what other, I mean, we've had some of the very controversial commercials that have literally on one dealing with race and the whole business down in York uh, with Lily Bell Allen, the young African-American woman who was shot in the deal with Charlie Robertson, who was the former mayor of York, who was tried and then acquitted the support that Tom Wolf gave him. That's been very controversial. An ad up, I think it may be down now, but wow. I, I think uh, McCord has hurt himself badly in the campaign with two ads. One ad is you're a sucker if you don't go for a 10% fracking tax. That is really irresponsible. Uh, that is, even if you would want to tax the industry at the maximum, 10% is way out of bounds. And to call people who don't agree with that sort of a high tax suckers, I think, loses votes. Now, the other ad, which is bad, any ad where two major icons of the Democratic Party, Bean, Ed Rendell, and Bob Casey, repudiate the ad unequivocally. If I were Wolf, I would, with their approval, with, I know they said they haven't endorsed Wolf, but with their approval, I would take uh, comments from their repudiation of that ad against Wolf. Oh, and, I see where you're heading with and, this. And basically, <laughs> and, Tom, it, and it, Tom Corbett puts those on the air, right? And basically, <laughs> this is no, no. Basically, this is Wolf is. I, Ed Rendell, say Wolf is a good guy. I, I, I'd well, run those. I'd run those. those. You take on those. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, been, it's gotten much more contentious in the last few weeks. Certainly, it started out, uh, f you know, fairly amicable. Has this helped uh, our existing governor, Tom Corbett? Yeah, sure. And I think what you're seeing is that, as you know, many people have said from the beginning, that as these, whichever Democrat candidate emerges, you're going to see the warts, et cetera, which is going to make yeah. this a much more but competitive Gene, look race. look at this. They agree. The problem, I think, right from the start is they agree on 90 percent of the issues that matter mm -hmm. to the voters. And I keep saying this over and over again. So therefore, this is a search, isn't it, to try to distinguish themselves one from the other? Oh, it is. It is. And of course, a lot of the issues that uh, voters 
care about, and we've talked about this in terms of intensity, for example, privatization of liquor stores isn't in there because not, none of the four of them wants yeah. to inject that in. Um, there are certain issues that will be put into this race as we move right. from May into November. And I want to talk about that be, as, before I let you guys go. Look, every poll shows education is profoundly important to the voters. Yes. Understand. Notwithstanding the cuts and all, let's forget that for a moment. It's important. It's important. The voters want education spending, all the cuts in the school, right. no matter how they got there, Fred Anton. Governor Corbett faces a billion dollar deficit in the budget this year. Mm -hmm. What happens if they cannot find a way to put more money in education spending? Isn't that a serious problem? It's a very, very serious problem. And with the uh, situation as it seems to be emerging with the shortfall in revenues, it seems that it's going to be a very, very tight budget. Don't they but have to find a way? To, look, you all been around this legislature for a long time. They can find a way to do almost anything if they really well, want to. Well, the way they can do it and the way they've done it in balancing this budget is by underfunding long-term liabilities. And there's one long-term liability that has been grossly underfunded. We know what's coming out now, $40 right? <laughs> billion. Dollars. So you add $2 billion underfunding onto the pensions. I mean, yeah. that's the only way to do it. It in my judgment. Right, we have about a minute. Well, pensions left. are the biggest deal. Yeah. In fact, the number is closer to 50. Uh, it it is underfunding. It could go to 60. And that doesn't count what's years. happening at the local level, uh, particularly Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. The reality is, if we don't resolve this pension situation, it is almost literally eating every penny of every dollar that comes in, every of all new revenue. Yeah. I don't know where we're going to go in this Commonwealth. And some of that was underfunding, some of it was a retroactive benefit increase that was done in 2001 that's now coming back to roost. All right, well, I'm going to let you guys go. You'll have to, we'll have to, I mean, we're going to have uh, you back in, in the fall. It's going to be very interesting. Go Governor Corbett obviously is going to have to face one of these. Who it is remains to be seen. All right, uh, Dr. Stuart Shapiro for our, our popular health care update. He's in the house. We're going to talk about what else? Health care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania, and by the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance, representing companies involved in America's most affordable, reliable energy source. To learn more, visit PACoalalliance.com. Hi, welcome back. Well, it's healthcare update time. Dr. Stuart Shapiro is in the house. He's the president and CEO of the PA Healthcare Association. He's the guy we call in from time to time. All right, I want to talk about nursing homes. They are by several, 80,000 Pennsylvanians in nursing care homes. That's larger than most of the cities in the state, yet fiscal problems, all kinds of financial uh, uh, difficulties. What's that about? Terry, before we get into the numbers, I want to do two things. First, I want to say Happy Mother's Day, because this week's is Thank Mother's you. Day. Yes, it is. And secondly, I, it's also Nursing Home Week, which you didn't know. No, I did not know. And I do what now. We, what <laughs> we want to do is we want to really say thank you, or I want to say thank you to the caregivers there, because there's about 120,000 people, many of them not making a lot of money, mm -hmm. all above the minimum wage, uh, really doing physically an emotionally demanding job. So on Mother's Day and Nursing Home Week, I think we got to do tribute, good, put a thumbs good, up to those job. folks. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Stuart on that. Go ahead. <clears throat> no, there are 80,000 people in nursing homes. And those same caregivers realize how the plight of nursing homes financially and how serious it is. In fact, this past week, <clears throat> 600 of them came to Harrisburg they came many on their own time, and they rallied in the Capitol, and they stood there screaming. They weren't led. They just stood there screaming, saying, 
protect our seniors. And they brought pictures mm -hmm. of yeah, people got, they care and for. And we got them on the screen. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> I didn't realize you had that. But it's, it is them standing up for their olives and their olivers and their martins <clears throat> and their johns and their bettys to say, mm -hmm. this nursing homes used to be financially stable. They used to be the bedrock of the long-term care right. system in Pennsylvania. Now that leads me and to, now, <clears throat> now that that's leads in me real to the problems. Question, why? How did we get here? How we did you get here? We got there for two reasons. Number one, the Medicaid reimbursement in this state for nursing homes is among the worst in the country. And while it cost $200 a day to care for someone on <clears throat> Medicaid, Medicaid reimburses only $174 a day. So there's a $26 a day shortfall, and so nursing homes are providing an awful lot of free care, almost $10,000 per individual. And there was a national study that showed that. It compounded the problems, or the problems were compounded because Medicare, which used to pay pretty substantially, has had tremendous cuts over the last several well, who years. Who decides the reimbursement? Is that the federal government? Is it the state government? Both? Medicaid is the state government, right. and I must compliment the governor. He's really made funding for nursing homes and seniors in Pennsylvania, wherever setting they are getting their care, a priority. So mm -hmm. bravo to Tom Corbett. But we're also asking the legislature to protect our seniors and give some more money, and we'll come back to that. But on the other hand, to pay for Obamacare and lots of other things, the federal government has taken the money out of the pockets of seniors who need care to pay for Obamacare. And mm -hmm. that was just blatantly wrong. Mm -hmm. And so and we've we, not heard much about that side of it. I oh mean, no, there's been a, other criticisms of the Affordable Care Act, and you know, it has its supporters too, but I've not heard that side of it. $14 billion dollars wow. were taken out of care for the elderly, out of Medicare, in order to pay for Obamacare. All of this has led to, we had a national study commissioned and it said that nursing homes, again the bedrock, were making 3.2% quote profit in 2007. That's now down okay. to under 1%. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, I want to do two things. I want to ask you, uh, yeah, I know you have solutions. You're going to tell me you have a solution, some solutions. And then <clears throat> if we get any time, I want to talk about this whole business of Medicaid expansion, which is very important. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Business Council and by the Pennsylvania Business Council Education Foundation. All right, we're back with Dr. Stuart Shapiro. We're talking about nursing homes and the fiscal problem and some of the other, some aspects of uh, the other services that they provide. All right, we, we, we've got serious financial problems. What's the solution? Well, what do you, what clearly do you, what we do, do have serious that? financial problems. The budget is very tight at the state level. We gotta focus on, just as Governor Corbett said, the must-haves, not the nice-to-haves. Mm -hmm. The must-haves are our frail elderly. We have to maintain the dollars that the governor has already put in his budget for the elderly, whether they get care at home or in a nursing home. Those dollars need to be protected. Secondly, there's a program that the legislature enacted last year that brought in millions of dollars of state dollars and federal dollars to provide access to the elderly who are on Medicaid in nursing homes. Okay. And that program sunsets on June 30th. It is very important that that program not go dark, that the legislature puts in another $16 million in next year's budget, which will provide access to those on Medicaid so they don't have to travel across the state mm -hmm. to get their care. And not only does it cost only $16 out of a $29 billion 
budget, but it brings in another $17 million in federal government, mm -hmm. from the federal government. So you spend 16, <clears throat> you, you double the dollars from the federal government, and it protects the frail elderly who need nursing home care. And what is your expectation, given the billion dollar shortfall we now hear about, that that will occur? Are you optimistic about that? I'm hopeful that the legislature realizes that their mothers, right. their aunts, their uncles, their neighbors, parents, some of their neighbors' spouses are in nursing homes. Right. And they recognize that. And this legislature cares about the elderly. And I have mm -hmm. hope, not necessarily confidence, but hope that they will do the right thing and protect our seniors. Okay, before you leave, let's talk about something you and I have chatted about before and that's Medicaid expansion. We're talking, I don't know, I hear different numbers. Let's say 500 to 600,000 Pennsylvanians would be eligible for Medicaid if it were to be expanded in Pennsylvania. The governor has his own plan called Healthy PA. Both of them are popular with the voters, uh, but it does ratchet up in terms of an important issue for the voters of this state. What is gonna happen? Governor Corbett has not been able to get Health and Human Services to agree to his healthy PA plan. I'm gonna put my empire <clears throat> hat on, and I'm gonna call balls and strikes as I see them. I'm not political. Okay. Right now, I know that the governor and his team and Secretary Macarth are negotiating every single day with HHS because they have proposed a plan that Pennsylvania can actually afford. What he's proposed is privatization or putting on private insurance, those five or 600,000 people. If they were to go on to Medicaid, which is what Obamacare does, it would move, right now there's one of six Pennsylvanians on Medicaid. If Obamacare in its classic form were put in, one of four would go on. You talked about a tight budget. We can't afford to have 600,000 more people on Medicaid. Governor Corbett, and I am not partisan, has proposed a plan that really is a much more effective way to do it. He is negotiating and his staff is negotiating with HHS because given our budget problems, they want to provide mm -hmm. care, but they don't want to break the bank yeah. in the process. And, and he dropped the work requirement, which was, I think, a non-starter because there's no Medicaid program in the country that requires people to and look we, for work. We could debate whether that's a good thing or a bad yeah, thing, but, but, but it's off the it, table. But he dropped it. Well, we got about a minute left. I mean, HHS, I mean, look, there's a lot of politics involved in almost every decision out of Washington. So is it conceivable that HHS just stalls this out until a they think a Democrat would become the next governor? Is that conceivable? I mean, you Well, deal. Let's, let's hope not. There's five or 600,000 yeah. people who need care. This governor has proposed a system that he could implement beginning January 1st, 2015, whether he's governor or not another, or there's a different governor. But if that plan is rejected or delayed, it will delay care in Pennsylvania okay. for another year because okay. no matter who's governor, if they start right. from scratch, they're not going to be able to do it. Thanks. We'll see you next week for another edition. Stay well.